Welcome to the Menominee Falls Public Library Board of Trustees monthly meeting. It is Wednesday, October 16th, 2024, and I officially call this meeting to order. Since there's nobody here, we will not go into uh, public comments. <coughs> uh, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Items listed under the consent agenda will be approved in one motion unless any board member requests that an item be removed for individual discussion. That item can be considered at an appropriate time during the board's regular order of business or under new business. Uh, so we have the minutes of the last regular meeting and the bill approval for September 2024 in the amount of $48,982.81. Can I get a motion to approve? Motion to approve is presented. And a second? Second. <laughs> I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All right, all in favor of approving the minutes of the last regular board meeting and the bill approval for September 2024 in the amount of $48,982.81, say aye. 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 Uh, next, we have the standing committee reports. Uh, we have the policy review committee. Uh, so first, we're gonna discuss and consider for approval policy review committee's recommendation of no updates to 3.03 .03 weapons policy. Can I get a motion to approve? Motion to approve as presented. And a second. Second. <laughs> All right, I have a motion to approve and a second. Any discussion? All in favor of approving the Policy Review Committee's recommendation of no updates to 3.03 .03 weapons policy. Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. Mm -hmm. Next, we have discuss and consider for approval the Policy Review Committee's proposed amendments to 3.04 internet use policy. Motion to approve as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? So what are all the changes? Let's just it's mostly go. just clarification and we divided up the policy into different sections. So we made it clear that uncovered beverages cannot, cannot be near the library computers. Um, we tidied some language up and then the big addition is that we added the guest pass procedure into our policy. So it goes, the last section goes over the requirements in order to get a guest pass. So a guest pass would be given if someone doesn't have a library card or if they have forgotten their library card and just going over what the requirements are and what needs to happen in order to get that guest pass. Limits, restrictions, those kinds of things. Yeah, let's see what that all is. Um, so So photo ID, so it says library card holders must be in good standing to get a guest pass, but if so they have a card holder, why, if they're a card holder, why do they need a guest pass? So that would be if they forget their library card because to get on the public computers, you have to type in your library card number. Okay. So if they don't have their card with them and they don't have it memorized, they, we would need to print them a guest pass so that they can get on the computer. Okay. Um, so adults who are visiting, expecting them to come back within a year's time. So we try to reserve guest passes for true guests. Um, anyone who lives in an adjacent county can get a library card or a resource card that will get them on the computer. We have, we have so many people who regularly use our computers and they want guest passes and guest passes and guest passes. But if they're coming in regularly, they should get a library card so that our actual card holder count is accurate to show the actual usage of the library versus handing out guest passes every single day. So okay. it restricted their access to the yeah. cards is what it did. Yeah, <clears throat> okay. Just making sure I understand it all. So then, um, and then patrons who do not live within the adjacent counties. 
Right. So you feel like this will help restrict that? So this is essentially the procedure that we've been using for a few years and it's worked out well. We just never actually had it written down on the policy side of things. And I do hope that that does um, help anyone who has an issue or a concern with the guest pass procedure to be able to point them to the policy. Being able to point patrons to the policy is always really helpful, especially right. if they <clears throat> are like, why do I have to get a library card? Why can't I just get a guest pass? Well, we have this policy for a reason and mm -hmm. it's pointing it to them. Okay. So yeah, yeah it, it has been working out well and we have seen a significant increase in card holders um, since starting that because these are people who are regularly coming in the library um, but they've always just asked for guest passes before when we'll actually get them a library card. Okay, that looks good. All right, cool. Any more questions? All right. All in favor of approving the policy review committee's proposed amendments to 3.03 .03 internet use policy, say aye. 3.4. Aye. 3.04. Yep. Aye. 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 <laughs> I was like, hello. <laughs> Any opposed? <laughs> Motion passed. Uh, next, we have discuss and consider for approval the policy review committee's proposed amendments to 3.05 teen space policy. Motion to approve is presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? So just, I do like that you said that parents, guardians can go in. Because mm -hmm. um, I think that's important to yeah. know if their child is in there. Right. That they can go in to get them but not to just hang out and right. join in on the fun. And we, and we took out the adults wishing to browse and check out items displayed because there is no items right. to check out in there anymore. When we initially built okay. the room, we did have some materials in there, so we wanted to make sure that everyone would have access to those materials, but we since rearranged, so there's really no materials in the room that they would be able to look at. Any more questions? All in favor of approving the policy review committee's proposed amendments to 3.05 teen space policy, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. Next we have the special events outreach and fundraising committee. Hey everyone, okay, so I'm scheduling a meeting with Jackie. We're gonna discuss um, the main goals. And I kind of want to categorize things from top to bottom and see what is priority, what's lesser priority, and then start the fundraising. So I'm excited about that. That's all I have. I like all it. Right. Uh, next is the trustee education, chapter three, organizing the board for effective action. So I wanted to circle back. We did the, do this one two months ago, but I wanted to touch specifically on the bylaws for our library that talk about the buildings and grounds responsibilities and just give you some updates. So in the bylaws, it says that the library board should be ensuring that buildings and grounds are maintained, that we regularly review various physical and building needs um, in terms of things like ADA compliance, making sure that we do those updates um, we are planning additional updates to the building in 2026 and beyond. So finishing after Children's is done, focusing on the rest of the first floor and then moving up to the second floor. Um, so I, in the next few months, I'm gonna be working with the village manager and the assistant village manager slash director of engineering to prioritize these and also get working on that document, hopefully, that the village is putting together with all of the village buildings and those update requirements. Really, I'm our progress moving forward with future projects in 2026 and beyond is very dependent on that document. So I'm hoping that we can get that started and that we're looking at 2026 for at least starting some of those updates. <coughs> um, and we're looking at using the money from 605, um, which is the tipping fees 
from waste management to hopefully get some of the bigger things done as well. So and then just to refresh my memory, so we're hoping that the village will be covering prices or expenses that are like the HVAC and the larger things that are like, building connected. Yes, right? like if we needed to replace an elevator, that would be the village. the village. A lot of the ADA requirements would probably fall to them as well since this is their building. Okay. Um, but really putting that on paper and clarifying that moving forward so that we have an understanding of what our responsibility is and we can budget and or fundraise <laughs> accordingly. So um, just continuing to focus on that. Thank you. And that's all I had on that one. All right. Next, I have the library board president's report. Um, I don't really have much other than um, I have visited Latitudes up there quite a few times this month, and it has been really good. And the feedback that I've gotten from the patrons has been very positive. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah, people are very excited about it. We've also heard a lot of positive feedback. So. It seems to be going very well. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so that is all I have for that. Um, then we got your report, which we have a coffee shop update. So. Yes. <laughs> so I'll start with the uh, statistics. So circulation for traditional materials, so physical circulation, that is decreasing. But um, e-circulation on Libby and Hoopla is increasing a lot, um, but that is also more expensive. So in the Bridges Library Systems budget, they are working on allocating additional funds to Libby so that we can have more lucky day collection items on Libby and less, they're, they're dialing back on Hoopla, as you know. We plan on continuing Hoopla because at this point, um, Bridges isn't quite there with having a comparable collection on Libby that would be able to create that on-demand content. Um, they really want the Lucky Day collection that they're building up to feel like Hoopla, but it's not definitely not there yet. It's going to take a while to build it up. So we do plan on continuing Hoopla, even if down the line the system is not interested in continuing with it system-wide, that's something that we would investigate, but I do think right now it's a really good resource and loved resource for our patrons. So that's something that we're kind of planning for in the future is, is keeping it because people really do love it. What is the price difference in Hoopla and Libby? Um, so we, it, Hoopla is definitely more expensive. It, we're spending about, $1,500 to $1,800 a month on Hoopla because it's price per checkout. So it's, about, it's anywhere from a dollar up to $7 every time someone checks out one title on Hoopla. There is that two title limit that we have. Um, so two, a patron can check out two titles per month from Hoopla. It used to be four. The goal, with bridges lowering it down to two a month was to help the cost factor. We haven't actually seen a decrease. Um, we've seen an increase in new users, so it's actually kind of evening out in the wash. We're not actually seeing uh, any difference, um, but there's people who are interested in it. So it's hard to balance the expense of it with the demand of it. Um, but moving forward, we're definitely interested in continuing to allocate additional funding to Libby and advocating for that at the system level and also keeping Hoopla or finding a way to find a really good comparable product. Can you explain to us like really what are the differences? So, you so know, why yeah. do we really, really need Hoopla? Because it's pretty pricey. It is pricey. So, so Libby, you can have 10 holds at one time, but it is not instant. So you could be on a wait list for months uh, for, for one book because the way that the licensing works through the publisher is that there can only be one person checking out the title at a time. So you could be on a wait list for months and months and months for a book, 
whereas on Hoopla, the content is, is on demand. There's no waiting. So if you see an audiobook that you really like on Hoopla, you can check it out and listen to it right away. Whereas Libby, you have to get in the queue, and you are not only with other patrons in the Bridges library system, but it's a statewide library that we contribute to. So if there's one copy of a book on Libby, you are getting in line with every single other library user in the state of Wisconsin to get that one copy. Bridges does contribute and we contribute money each year towards the Advantage collection. So those are titles that Bridges Library System purchases that goes to Bridges patrons first. So there could be 30 different digital copies of the new James Patterson book. And then that's throughout the entire state that that has to be shared. But then Bridges can purchase an additional five and that jumps the line to Bridges Library System patrons first to help get those wait times lowered. So it's the same product. I'm just trying to similar, make sure I really Similar, similar. The collection is different, so the offerings are different. So if you go on Libby, they may have they may have a book that Hoopla doesn't have. So the titles the titles and offerings are mm -hmm. different. And then do we pay like a monthly fee for Libby or is it like a yearly? It's an annual fee, um, just, and it goes through the system. Okay. So it's part of our Bridges system costs every year. Um. I'd, I'd personally like to see a little bit more on the financial side breakdown of that. Yeah. I'm just kind of struggling with that one, because if it's a hardcover book and we have one in the system, I'm waiting for that one too. Mm -hmm. But if I'm going to pay as a library $15 eight dollars to check out a book it, anyway it, that's it why I'm, I'm curious about the, the financial breakdown on that so I guess I would like to see some more on that yeah it's interesting that you say that because the hoopla co cost per circulation is actually comparable to <clears throat> our cost per circulation that we used to calculate cross-county reimbursement for our physical materials. Mm -hmm. So our cost per circulation is usually between five and seven dollars depending on our annual budget. So it's actually similar. But she can check it out later once we purchase the hard copy. Right. Whereas that one, we gotta buy it every single time. No, there's a, li oh yes, for Hoopla, yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. why I'm wondering about the, the cost of that and the effectiveness. If I'm not mm -hmm. saying yay or nay, I just, is I there a time where we could be shown sort of a, a little bit better yeah. in-depth differentiation between those two? Yeah, absolutely. I can definitely put that down for a future board meeting. Um, well, I don't we need to have a board meeting. I just maybe a special presentation. We can come and watch it. I, I don't know if we want to spend hour at a board meeting doing I could work. definitely just send you an email with some information too if that's yeah. helpful yeah, yeah just kind of breaking it down yeah um I'd everybody's be happy. going what did you just do for <laughs> us we got to sit through that <laughs> yeah I don't want that yeah. definitely but I would like to the that. way it I mean if you look at the circulation statistics people want that digital content it's just how do we get the digital content to them as fast as possible and that's the same thing that we do with the physical materials, right? So we have rules for every five local holds that there are here at the Falls Library on one title, we buy an additional title. So making sure that we get there to that level with the digital books while also not spending our entire budget on <laughs> Libby and Hoopla. So I think these, these companies are definitely realizing that they're, um, their financial platforms and the way that they are offering these things to libraries are just not working. And there's a lot of pushback with the publishing companies and how they are putting so many restrictions on these ebooks that you can't have multiple people looking at them at once and all that sort of thing. Hoopla has lost thousands of library customers because they just cannot afford it. So I think there's gonna be a big shift. I sense a shift in the lending platforms and the way that they actually go about it because they realize that libraries are frustrated at how expensive it is. Well, and maybe we make a statement with them. Yeah. Because as we're looking at budget, we're deep in the budget, 
right now, and um, we, you know, we do have to we do have to look at ways. Yes. To maintain a very nice library. Yeah. But there comes a point where we do have to start going. Okay, like, what does make sense? Right. Even though we want people to have every opportunity to get the items they want, mm -hmm. we Is know that. More of a clarifying question. So uh, Hoopla is what, how does it compare to my Audible subscription that I have personally? Is it, is it like that? It has quite a bit of um, audiobooks, absolutely. So it's like that. The it, same thing with Libby, but again, if you're going on a road trip, the, the audiobook you may see on Libby, mm -hmm. there might be a six week wait. Got whereas it. on Hoopla, you get that right away. It's on demand. Mm -hmm. so Sometimes the, people so might Hoopla have is to a wait. lot more like my yeah. Audible. Yeah. So Hoopla is a lot more like Audible. Because yeah, you can buy yes. it and get it immediately. Yeah. I mean, I mean, Libby Basically. has Except audio. I don't own it. Yes. Right? Except I don't own it. Yes. Like, yes. Yeah, I have Audible it's, also. It's just the way yeah. I... So sometimes so people I. might have to wait sometimes is kind of my... It just just, some, these are things to start thinking about. Yeah. I really think. Mm -hmm. So I so wish will, if they'd want to do there, updates too. Will there be anything, I'm not volunteering to go this year, but will there be anything at the library convention related to that topic this year? No. Okay. <clears throat> Sounds, anyway. Would, okay. Is that tomorrow? Um, tomorrow, tomorrow is the trustee appreciation event That's at right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I registered. What? Awesome. I'll be there. I did sign up to go. <laughs> oh, okay. Bring awesome. <laughs> it's our anniversary <laughs> dinner, so we're going to go to that. I'm just kidding. Lucky woman. <laughs> See that guy? He's no, thinking. You're thinking. Yeah. <laughs> just like, just like right here, right? You're, you're thinking. I have a question, actually related to this, though. Yeah. <laughs> um, are are there any other systems that we could use in place of Hoopla that don't charge like that? Not with the same lending model yeah. and the same catalog. Um, like I said. Hoopla, and, and we've had discussions with Hoopla's, conference calls with Hoopla at Bridges meetings, and they know that we're frustrated. And I think, I really do believe that they're gonna start changing the way that they charge libraries. Because we want people to use our services, but Hoopla's always been that secret service that we have, because we can't market it so much, because if every single patron started using Hoopla, our, <laughs> our annual budget would be blown in like two months. Um, so I, I can definitely start having some conversations with our rep just to see maybe there's something on the horizon that, we, that I'm not aware of that they are gonna be changing their lending model and their, the way that they charge libraries. But- Well, send us the breakdown. Yeah. But I, would, I do think it would be interesting to see what we are spending on that every month. Yep. Is it on the budget? It is on the, um, it's on. Yeah. I mean. So this, it's gonna be under Midwest Tape. That is the, so in September, we spent $1,581.08 on Hoopla. That is in the, this one. West, it's That's not a bad thing. Oh, okay. I got my stuff already. That seems reasonable here. to me. Hmm? What is yeah, our I what guess is our I was expecting a bigger number. That number seems reasonable. Number for yeah. the, the, the for Libby. Thing oh. right Do you know? Keep going. Off top of your head. Thank you. <laughs> Ten fifteen thousand. It's it's cheap. Page it's about the same. Ten to fifteen. 000. Yeah. So about a thousand dollars a month. Yeah. Oh. Give or take. Yeah. yeah. So it's on the back. So if we stayed around that with Hoopla, it would be yeah comparable. Yes. Oh, okay. That that number <clears throat> seems reasonable to me. Fifteen hundred a month. Fifteen hundred a month. It does. Yeah. Okay. But we also have Libby. People may just have to wait a little bit. Well, there is something to be said that we're at a point where we all want it right away, right? But we may not necessarily be able to get it right away. So if that's the beauty of Hoopla is that we get it instantaneously, we might not the, be able to have that advantage. The goal when Bridges implemented Hoopla was to provide a 
alternative to the long wait times on Libby. Right. Because for a, a very long time, the state of Wisconsin, all of the libraries, they hadn't increased the budget for Libby in 10 years. So we were very, very behind the times. Now we're starting to put more money towards Libby. So it's possible that we get to a point where there are a lot more lucky day items on Libby, which is that instant content. Right. We're just not there yet. With all of our partnerships, and so I'm just throwing out this idea, you tell me if it's possible or not. Is there a way to have sort of like a premier membership to the library that provides them access to that each year that costs? No. Right. You cannot charge per state statute. All right. Well, I guess that helps answer the question. Yeah, it's okay. It's a fair question. Yeah. Because okay. <laughs> you do fees on question. one end. So if you charge late fees... It would cover. Could you charge another it's, fee? It's not yeah. really... Just thought it is. It's not really no. free. I mean, I, I, I had a similar question. Just when you see both sides of the ledger. But it's okay. I think this is great conversation, and I'm, I, I think it's definitely good to look forward. And like I said, I... Um, yeah, just send, okay, us the, okay. send us the breakdown. Yeah. Hoopla, Libby. Yeah. I understand the benefits, so let yeah. me just be clear with that. Oh, but yeah. But they're also, you know, as we're looking at the entire picture, you know, in life we can't always get things immediately, and so let, let's just see if it makes sense at the end. Yeah. Especially if they are that much more. We than, did have 662 living. checkouts last month on Hoopla, so it's a, it's a beloved service. So I'm sure even it is. If it, even if we don't keep hoopla forever using it as a transition into either building up Libby or going with a different type of vendor that may came out come out I think is important um, we did have a lot of people upset when we went from four checkouts a month on hoopla to two so I'm a big believer in don't pull a service unless you have something to point them to it like yes we're getting rid of hoopla but We've got this. Well, we do have Libby. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, but people are very frustrated with Libby, and I mean, sometimes you can be waiting, no joke, six months for a book. So, yeah, getting Libby to a point where it's a lot less wait time um, would be that would be, a good, would be good. I'd be curious. I yeah. agree. So I, yeah, the financial breakdown on that. How can we get more? I mean, just there's a whole lot of questions. Yeah. I would like. Mm -hmm. what, I mean, if it, it comes just gets down to more and more complicated. we had, if it come if it came down to we either have to cut the staff or we have to cut hoopla. I think I would vote for cutting hoopla. Right, just saying. But, but yeah. also keep in mind that the money that we spend on Libby and hoopla also does go towards the Waukesha County minimums to exempt for collection. Oh, so even oh. if we cut hoopla that would go back to like physical books or you know something like that so so are the, we at the minimum yes we, we are at the minimum across the board yes for for the amount that we have to spend yeah. so it's not like we're like over for hoopla that's just something that we allocated mm -hmm. in our collection budget to make that happen so mm -hmm. how does that count towards it if like you don't know it's the, i mean like does the whole collection switches. count towards our collection or only how many checkouts the checkout or no 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 i'm sorry the money that we spend on hoopla counts towards that minimum that we have to spend each year on materials yeah. So you're okay. saying whether we spend it on Hoopla or we spend it, spend it on physical books. Right. That's the amount that we would be spending Correct. anyway. So. Yes. So to cut it wouldn't matter because we're really not cutting anything per right. se. It's just going to yeah. a different thing. I feel like this requires a whole nother. Oh, yes. Like whoever wants. <laughs> like yeah. Maybe we set apart another date for a special meeting for whoever wants to come. Yeah. Like not everyone has to come. Yeah. Like, so, how about just like a presentation meeting yeah. instead of like a voting <laughs> yeah. meeting? Yeah. <laughs> I'm happy to read it. Read whatever you're going to sign. Yeah. Okay. Really? I mean, right. I think it's interesting. I, I can start with kind of compiling the data for you and just send it out to you. And then 
if there's further discussion warranted, we can definitely yeah. continue. It's a lot. It's, it's a lot with the bridges minimums. And yes, it is. There's a lot. All, it is. It's so. It's, yeah. All right. I'm um, good. Um, anything else about my statistics? Otherwise, I was going to give you a coffee shop update. Coffee so shop. coffee shop. All right. <laughs> So in your email uh, that Ellen sent with your packet, you should have gotten as well the first yes. monthly report from Latitude with the amount of money that we got in. I saw that, yeah. So for the first month, it was a little over $700, which was great because it actually wasn't a full month. Um, they open September, it was 20 days. Six, fifth, Fourth, technically. Fifth, fifth. Yeah. So it was really good. Um, the, the owners provided a really comprehensive breakdown. I thought you guys might find that interesting, kind of seeing the whole breakdown of it all. But things have been going really well. We've gotten a lot of positive feedback. Um, I really think that it's, people are starting to catch on to it. We're, they're starting to see, I'm starting to see regular traffic up there uh, for repeat patron customers, so that's really great. The only unexpected kind of snafu that we ran into is, and really the only <laughs> complaints that I've gotten is because they are cooking food in that room, the ventilation is not great in that area, and so it tends to permeate to spaces like the teen space and like outside that area on the second floor. And for whatever reason, when they're cooking things like bacon in there, the ventilation goes directly into the teen space and then it just sits. Um, so there is an overpowering smell of like food cooking, particularly when, whenever they cook bacon, when you walk in that teen space, it is bacon for like for, for a very long, amount of time and it's we've gotten complaints from patrons we've gotten complaints from staff that the smell is just very overpowering and making them feel sick so I talked to our maintenance um, manager to see is there something that we can do with the HVAC system to redirect the venting or is it possible we could shut a vent if there's one between the teen space and the coffee shop and his answer was no there's nothing that they're able to do in order to like just close a vent um why because don't it's vent, all why don't they vent into the sitting space that is all glass so there it's glass all the way up and i think what happened with this is is when the space was being designed. I believe everybody was under the assumption that they were just that they weren't going to be cooking food like meals, but that it was just going to be like prepackaged baked goods from their Germantown location. And I know when they were doing the E plan with the state of Wisconsin to get all the permitting and everything, that the one machine that they used to cook it doesn't require outside ventilation it doesn't require a vent hood so one wasn't put in um so at, at this point i'm kind of at a loss to what to do and what to say because i feel like i've gone the maintenance route to see if we can just you know can they cook the bacon off site and bring it they in? don't cook it there they're cooking bacon they're it the must be on the sandwich or something they're cause... cooking bacon apparently well, they don't have a they don't have a fryer or anything. Like they, that, so. I think they use the oven that they bake the pizzas in because they're baking pizzas there and everything too. Oh uh, well, that's, I don't, they, I can, they can they can vent into that side. <clears throat> I don't know. They, Pardon? They, <laughs> they could vent into the sitting area. It's yeah. just the a matter external of, one. Just yeah. a matter of an HVAC. But person. then is it is that the outside? Right, right, out right. The, the patio, patio right there. there. There's a patio. I mean, right. they they could do it. It's a matter of money. But I mean, it, it's doable. Because I know at one point, I'd like the, to see how bad it is, I guess, before I, we... I, I know at one point, the state e-plan person was talking about needing a vent hood if they're going to be cooking food. Um, but the machine that they're using to cook, it's not like they have a grill in there, but the machine, they're, the oven type yeah, thing that like they're a, using a special oven. to cook the food, 
doesn't need it, doesn't need to be ventilated, but I think it's just the way that the space is and the way that the ventilation works, because all of that ventilation on that renovated space up there, the team space, the maker space, it's all interconnected. So there's really no way to be like, sure, we can just like divide it up by room and it won't be an issue. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it like I said, it's, it's doable. It's, it's just a matter of money. money. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, certainly, I mean, I'm not an HVAC person, but I've had HVAC people do a lot of work and of course it's doable, but it's just a matter of the divert and and flow and what are they going to punch through and I mean, you know, so. I say we hold off on this quite honestly. I mean, I'll, I'm curious what Latitudes is cooking that is causing that big of a smell and maybe there's, um, <laughs> yeah, if there's a way to. <laughs> I'm concerned Have for the patrons. Happened? I would want them to be happy and the staff to be happy as well because they're hearing the negative side and you know we're trying to make it good for everybody so mm -hmm. maybe hold off but if we need to say you can't cook bacon on site but you could cook it off site and bring it on board or if we need yeah. to do something cost later um, but I am concerned for the patrons and the yeah. staff and so maybe monitor it again for another month and see what happens. Well and I haven't had this discussion with the owners of Latitude yet because important. I wanted to see if you guys wanted me to look into different ventilation in there, if we should go yeah. that route, or That's if I would, talk. I would talk to Latitude. I mean, they're so good and they've really been making themselves part of the community, part of the library. Mm -hmm. I don't see a problem unless anybody else does with just having a conversation with them about this. Yeah. They might I, I be think able they to would want to know. Yeah, they might be able to even present solutions yes, to you. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, I would agree with it that. It might first. be one food item that we doesn't even matter much or something. Mm -hmm. I I was thinking too maybe it would be a good idea to have them kind of come in every month and you know, they can update us and then if they have something that they want to come to us with or if we have questions for them directly then it can all be done right here. I mean we do meet monthly. Um, we have our monthly meetings and that's usually our time when we're like okay how's everything going everything good um, and that's been going really well that's been really helpful but I mean yeah. it might I not be a bad out. idea in the beginning here yeah, yeah. In the beginning. <laughs> I mean, we don't maybe necessarily need to keep it on the agenda every month, but at least maybe for the first few months, just to make sure that they're doing okay. And you, if you get complaints, then you can bring it up. You know, I mean, obviously, I would like you to bring it up with them first. And right, but you yeah, know. I just was. I mean, because I mean, I want them to be able to cook their food. Certainly, I, I hate <laughs> to be. I hate to say you can't cook this. Right. Um, right. Because certainly they're not they're, to they're following the contract. They're mm -hmm. they're doing and following you know all the permits and everything like that. But I just wanted to see if you wanted me to <coughs> investigate some additional ventilation, or or if if I should just start with talking to them about some of the issues that I, I would, would say sure. yes to all of that. Okay, meaning. Start with I, would, I would look at every option, mm -hmm. including and starting with latitude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, see what they think first. Well, I'm not saying do anything, yeah. but yeah, I'm I saying just start well, there. they may have some more ideas too, as right. far as ventilation goes. Right. Issue, yeah. so. mm -hmm. I mean, we've identified a different income source and a nice service to the community. There's some positive dollars coming in. Uh, you know, short-term results are good and very positive. There's solutions for this, mm -hmm. so I would say yes to everything you just said. Yeah. But maybe no action yet. But looking into it, sure. Mm -hmm. You know, it isn't probably not going to cost anything to look at a lot of different avenues for a solution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it certainly would be a nice thing to have a few windows in this building that actually open. <laughs> we have we have three windows that open in this building, and they're they're in the boardroom. The rest. Yeah, there is, that is an issue in there because I had a bunch of staff. I took my whole uh, district, most of the district office staff over there. And then I know there's been other sub meetings that some department heads have had over there. Mm -hmm. And that, yeah, when you get into that, that's a nice area to be in, you know, the kick out yeah. to the side. Mm -hmm. But there is no way to open anything right. if you want. 
But it yeah. is still a nice space. Yeah. It's a really nice space. Mm -hmm. so. All right. I will discuss at our next meeting uh, with Latitude and just see where we can go from here. And if they're like, hey, ventilation would be awesome, I'll start looking into that a little bit more and report back next time. Do you want me to invite them to the next board meeting? Yeah. Just sort of for a check-in? Okay, awesome. I'll do that. Jackie, I know we're also early in the game, but um, always interested in how expense for latitude um, balances with profit. So, mm -hmm. and we, at the time that we went down with this, we didn't quite have a way of measuring that. Yep. Are we looking for that avenue? Again, we're early in the game, so mm -hmm. I'm not looking for it now. But at some point, I'd be curious to know how that weighs out. With the, are you, are you talking about electricity yeah. and water? Yeah, yeah. Um, we have been tracking that more because we're, we recognize, well, we've been tracking that more for a while now because sure. we recognize that electricity is one of our largest expenses building maintenance wise. Mm -hmm. um, we have seen a slight increase this quarter. Um, I can show you that right now. So um, in 2023 for quarter three, our sewer and water expenses were 2,600, uh, almost 2,700. In 2024, it was 3,300. So there has been a slight increase. Um, hard to say if that's just all the extra people in the building or if that is correlated to latitude. That, I mean, I don't know how much how much money, how much water they are using. Sure. Um, we're also tracking electricity use, and I do not have those numbers right now. And like I said, I'm not worried about it now, mm -hmm. but um, like within three months, let's see how it all measures out. Yeah, and definitely. Then, and how do we measure their, their profit to what we pay out, right. which is going to be difficult, and we knew it was going to be hard at the time. Right. So, but I'd still be interested in tracking that and seeing how it goes. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I'll keep uh, providing that information. Are we in a we... positive position with our budget overall? This year? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. We were under budget because of the computer thing, right? Yes. Yeah. So, but we just asked for more money. Oh, I get that. Yeah. Just. General question. Oh, that's right. Always watching. Thank you, Jen. Yep. And oh, me next. 2025 budget update. Um, thank you to those of you who came last night. Uh, it was not very long of a meeting at all at the village board. Um, Mark Fitzgerald gave an overview of the village budget. There was some brief discussion about the library budget. It seemed very well received. Um, I didn't hear of any issues, so that's great news. And they actually canceled, I sent you the email, they canceled Thursday's meeting. They didn't feel like they needed to discuss more. So then Monday night, um, there's another meeting, and that one is going to be um, where they are kind of authorizing the temporary finalization of the budget so that they can publish it in the newspaper and do all those publications so that in November it can be voted on. And Monday night there is the opportunity to ask questions and that's going to happen immediately after their regular 6.30 p.m. board meeting. But it's looking really positive. The village board asked some really good questions. Um, and they, they seem to really understand the good work we're doing. So I'm, I'm very uh, confident that we're in a really good position and the Village Board is super supportive of the library and everything we're doing, so it's awesome. So we're there, we were there on Tuesday to support you in the event of questions and things like that. I sense that you're not real concerned about anything, that they're gonna ask anything really complicated or hard that we would stand beside you on Monday. Do you think that we need to be there on Monday too for that, that meeting? I don't think so. Anne, do you think so? Do you think it's going to be? It, it's so hard to tell. I don't know. You know, you never know. I'm one person. Yeah. You know, we haven't talked yeah. outside of it. Right. <clears throat> it is tough as you can see. <clears throat> you know, we really do try to be fiscally responsible and mm -hmm. 
Um, so that's why I don't try to come in here and be the heavy on everything, but um, yeah, I don't know. Okay. So what time would we be thinking? You said after their 6.30 meeting, there'll yeah. be time for questions. So if I came around 7.30 or something like that, with that, what do you think, Dan? Yeah. Possibly. I Possibly. don't know what our whole agenda is yet. Okay. So I Possibly would say 7.30, 8, something like that. Okay. Thank you. Might yeah. be a shorter meeting because we're doing the budget. Yeah, maybe once the agenda comes out, if you see that there's yeah. like a million presentations, maybe plan a little wait. later. Yep. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping not. Yeah. <laughs> that can get a little bit of a long after night. two hours. <laughs> yeah. Stuff, yeah. I know I'm coming to a village board meeting soon. I don't know if it's next week, but it's on something else oh. with the, the Riverside Sea and Rec. Okay. But I, I turned my phone off or else I'd look. So, because that's all coming to the, okay. awesome. the architectural control board and then. But I forget. I thought it was next week. Did it go through the That's. I think that's next week. Okay, so if David's on the agenda, plan uh, to get uh, there at 9 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> so it, won't be, it will not be our next board meeting then, but it will be the one after. I think it will be after. Yeah. I think we have ACM next week or ACB next yeah. week. Yeah. <clears throat> It'll Sorry. be quick if he just wins them all over. Right, exactly. <laughs> Whatever you want. Are you kidding? We're, we're way, we're dialed in with the village. <laughs> we are helping the village. Yeah, yeah, it's great what you're doing. See that? See that? It is. They know. <laughs> all done? Yep. All right. Next up, village trustees report. Well, we just talked about the fact that we talked about the budget. That was pretty much everything that we did <clears throat> on Monday. Uh, the meeting before that, we had a very lengthy board meeting to consider the rezoning of Nine Acres, which we were talking about. And it was, I hate to vote for rezoning. I really do. It's like, I think most of us prefer not to. In this case, that land and the Excuse fact me. of um, where that is and the group that wants to come in and develop this senior living facility, I, I thought it was the best use of that property and I think it's going to be the best for the residents back there because that's going to be all pretty much sealed off. So it's not going to interfere with the residential area back there. Yeah, it's over by my house. Oh, it is? Mm -hmm. I, well, I, that's why that guy knocked on your door. <laughs> and Where is the land in? It's Good Hope and... Appleton, so it's right across from Town Bank. Yes. That's Next. been there for a long time. There's been many proposals in the past. The last thing I'd want to see is another big apartment complex there. <laughs> and this group coming in really proposed a beautiful building and entrance and exit out of Good Hope. Mm -hmm. And I think it will be a good option, the best option that we've had. It's a busy corner. It is. It's very busy. And it will be more busy, too, with the development on the other side as well. So. Oh, it mm -hmm. is, yeah. yeah. That's, that's it. Okay. All right. Next is the Menominee Falls School District report. Okay, and I forgot my cheater glasses, so I'll do my best with my handwritten notes here. It's homecoming week, so happy homecoming. <coughs> um, it's especially best week in high school. Right. It's homecoming week, so we're excited. It's, it's actually very late this year. It's the last week of the football season. Usually, homecoming is is up on in football games. So this is actually the last week of the football season. So it's very late. So happy homecoming! I'll be at the high school in the morning to check around with some of their doors, some of their homecoming activities. So it's an exciting week in any high school. Dances this weekend, you know that whole What's thing. What's the team doing? I don't know. I I usually follow that better. Yeah. We're having a great homecoming week. All right. <laughs> but, uh, good. Let's go homecoming just, week. Great, just a great homecoming week. Okay. Uh, so, so we have a, a little bit of a, an early fall break on Friday, so there's no uh, students on Friday. So we're not quite to a quarter way through the school year. That's sometime in November, but we're getting there pretty quickly. <clears throat> so we're, we're kind of into the school year far enough where that first quarter of the school year. We're kind of come nine weeks usually, so we kind of break it into four nine-week chunks. We're kind of getting to that second part of that first nine-week chunk. 
So uh, we have a day off for students on Friday, uh, which is exciting, I'm sure, to have that long weekend, right on a nice fall, warm weekend, go Packers. It falls on my uh, daughter's birthday. <laughs> my Happy birthday. birthday. So we're gonna have a thank you to all the school principals next week. Uh, this is National School Principal Month. So uh, all the school, I was a school principal for 18 years. So uh, next to teachers, teachers obviously are, are critical uh, for our students, but next to that is school principals for sure. Um, there's a lot of activity with teachers and principals in order to keep moving the mission forward in terms of growth and achievement and, and that sort of thing. So thank you to Mr. Gabauer at the high school, uh, Mrs. Kovar is at the middle school, Mr. Gofford at Ben Franklin, Mrs. Tamlingsing at Valley View, uh, and uh, Mr. Walter over at Riverside and Mr. Hoffman over at Shady Lane. Those are our six building principals uh, that we'll be celebrating next week. Thank you to Falls Cable Access. They'll be part of a taping with John Mucure with that group uh, next week, uh, which will be fun. We'll have breakfast for them and a little bit of a celebration um, along with the taping with John Mucure. So you'll be able to see that. That'll come out in a, a newsletter. And let's see, point three is we're finalizing the budget. So all school districts in the state of Wisconsin actually finalized their numbers this week. So that's why you've seen a lot of news articles out there in Milwaukee Public Schools. They had a big press conference. So every school district in the state of Wisconsin, numbers were finalized this week in terms of property valuations, student counts, all that sort of thing. So pretty much all 400 plus school districts in the state, this is their week, including in this school district, where our money folks are looking at the annual meeting and saying, this is what we told everybody we were gonna be at, and here's where we're actually at. That's what this week is about. So we're finalizing that. I'll be getting a final report tomorrow, which will come to the, board, the school board at the end of the month. Obviously, that'll have an effect on mill rate, because that's the final number. So it has, a lot of that is based on a lot of different moving parts, but it's house valuations is part of it, you know, the, the valuations of property in the whole district, along with pupil count. So, so it's a big time for that. Numbers are in, but not public yet, for achievement and growth in terms of how the district did with learning last year. So we have the data, but it's embargoed, which means that the state, it's not out in public yet. But it will be soon. So it will be out there soon. We've seen this information. We've started to look at it, work on it, and refine our goals uh, going in to the remainder of this year uh, based on that important information. Uh, so that's a big thing. And one of the last things is the Riverside expansion. CE and Rec project is in its final stages of planning. So we'll be coming to the village uh, several times in the next month, uh, including the architectural control board. Uh, so what that means is that we're in final design. So we'll be expanding uh, CE and Rec. So for those that aren't aware, Community Ed and Rec is a department of the school district. Fully, 100%, it's not, it's not village run in any way, shape, or form. It's completely a department of the school district and we, we pr proudly operate it for the community. We're expanding that facility 18,000 square feet, um, including a new gym, a new walking track that's solely you know, com community use during the day. Uh, so that Riverside can expand as well. So River so will the walking track be open yep. during the day? That yeah, that'll be up to C and Rec programming. Okay. Um, but it will be accessible all day. Whereas right now the community can't access the gym during the day because the school is using it. Now the gym will be fully available during the day. I think there'll be a lot of pickleball, I'm guessing. Uh, just based on what I've heard <laughs> and the way that we're setting it up. But uh, there'll be other things as well. So adding a gym to the community, uh, but also the school district is, is good for everybody. Yeah. Um, but uh, so we're excited about that project. Groundbreaking is probably April, uh, but the Riverside part of it for the school district will be started and completed in the summer. So the expansion of Riverside and creating that extra space, there's quite a bit of work going on inside of Riverside, moving the library, I mean, we're doing quite a bit. The library at Riverside, sorry. Just for those. So that work will actually be completed next, in the summer of 2025. 
So you're gonna see a lot of activity over in that piece of property. Mm -hmm. And I know I've been talking about it a lot, but it's not really real until you see things in the ground That's and exciting. a wall goes up, dirt starts to fly. So when those questions start to come, I'll periodically you know, be bringing that information. But we'll be coming to the village and we've been working with the village hand in hand on uh, the designs and the final uh, code requirements uh, before coming to the Architectural Control Board and then up for final approval. <clears throat> so we plan to be out to bid in November and breaking ground in April. So we're excited about that project for the community as a whole, but also for Riverside. We have some space <clears throat> concerns there and we're gonna be solving those next summer. So yeah. we're excited, or this summer, the coming summer, which we're excited about. So that's all I have, unless you have any questions. All right, next up is the Friends Report. Okay. So starting last month, we had our book sale. Um, the, the Friends have what's called Friends Firsties, which is the night before the sale. Um, and they made $665.25 at the night for, of Friends Firsties. Um, and the event itself was very successful, raising $2,484.52, which is overall the third highest sale combining the first D's night and the total. So that was pretty exciting. You have a handout. Um, the friends are hard at work finding ways to support our library. And so what's coming up Wednesday, October 23rd at Chocolate Factory um, is a night where we get 25% off of all purchases made from 4 to 9 p.m. So if you like Chocolate Factory and you'd like to support the friends and then of course the library. Um, that would be a cool opportunity to do that. And Chocolate Factory is a pretty nice place. I've been there a couple of times, so that's a good opportunity for the friends. Um, we are excited. Oh, so we'll go next to November. There will be a bake sale um, on election day. Um, we're excited about that too. So the bake sale will run nine to 11 and five to seven busy times during um, election day and we'll have bakery available for sale so that's exciting and um, also we are working with chocolate falls which was the gift that you all received today is from chocolate falls dawn is very supportive of the library and what we're doing and is working with the friends um, tentatively we have a date planned of january 18th where 30%, this is a Saturday, 30% all day from 10 to 5, proceeds raised that day, 30% will go to the Friends and thus will go to the library. So again, we're doing good things. The Friends are doing great things. Um, we're hoping to kick off the 18th, January 18th on Black Friday, start promoting it there. So um, some very exciting things going on with the Friends. I'm happy to report all of that. Thank you. Friends Week sometime coming up. Next week is yes. Friends of the Library Week. National Friends of the Library Week. I think that's next week. Is it coming? <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> next week. Yeah, <laughs> it is. <laughs> it seems so far away, but it is, yes. I saw it, I was like, wait, it's coming up. I know it is. Yep. <laughs> so that's all I have, thank you. All right. Um, then we have discussed the suggested amendments to Library Friends library and board memorandum of understanding to be approved in November of 2024. Yes, so this is gonna be on the agenda for you and for the friends in November. I just wanted to check and see if the consensus was that this was okay, that instead of saying that we have to or organize an annual meeting between the friends and the library, that at the request of one or both organizations, we will have an annual meeting. That way, it, it's, if one of us or both of us wants to have a meeting, we will. Otherwise, it's not like it's mandated that we have to. Does that sound good? Very good to me. Awesome. Does that sound good with everybody? Okay, then I will include this on what will tentatively be approved in November. Great. That's it. All right. Next meeting is Wednesday, November 20th, 2024. We are adjourned.